This is ABC 15 Mornings. Right now at 6, the death toll continues to climb more than a week after a condo building in Florida partially collapsed. That building and a nearby building now evacuated as a precaution after an audit found unsafe conditions. Plus, as we kick off our 4th of July weekend here, some places are closing early and it could impact your holiday plans. And ahead of the NBA Finals, the new Phoenix Suns gear that's going on Ooh. sale today Ooh. to celebrate uh, their new position in the league as Western Conference champions and as uh, NBA Finals participants. Man alive, I just got my Valley shirt with all the colors, but now I see that one that has the actual <laughs> state of Arizona on uh, it. Come on, man. But I waited, so I'll, maybe I'll scoop that one up. Marketing they'll, geniuses. They'll too. probably be gone by the time I get down there. <laughs> Six o'clock on this Saturday morning, and we hope that we can kick your day off with a smile. I'm Nohe Lani Graf. And I'm Mark Thompson. And yeah, those tickets, they didn't last long either. I mean, they as soon as they went on sale, even before I think they were supposed to go on sale, people were snapping them up and they were gone. Just like that, lowest price is like 800 bucks for nosebleed seats. Yeah, everybody right better there. be ready because they're not going to have their rent payment on time <laughs> next month. That's to right. Pay for those tickets or their mortgage. All right, let's talk about that most accurate forecast for you now because it wasn't cheap, let me tell you. But looking outside, we've got some nice temperatures right now. 88 degrees. We've got some clouds out there. So partly cloudy skies, keeping those temperatures mild, making for some beautiful colors. Breezes around six miles an hour at this hour. So here's what we can expect from that most accurate forecast. The temperatures will stay mild through the rest of this weekend. We continue to have storm chances and then we're going to start heating up once again. So looking at that 4th of July weekend forecast 104 today and tomorrow. The big difference 40% chance of storms today, 30% chance of storms tomorrow. So here in the valley that could mean gusty winds and blowing dust if storms move into our area and the storm threat is higher in the eastern portion of the valley across northern Arizona and southeastern Arizona scattered storms and that could bring pockets of heavy rain and even some small hail. So there's chances of that and then those storm chances will take us through the start of the work week, but they start to dwindle and we should point out that any areas of burn scars do have a risk of flooding as long as those storm chances linger. So I will time that out for you and have that high country forecast coming up in that full most accurate forecast this morning. All right, Nohe, thank you. And here's a live look right now at a crash near the 202 and 17th Avenue. It is blocking multiple lanes going eastbound. It's just a heads up for you if you plan on heading out and your travels take you that way. ADOT, some good news here. They are not closing any highways for construction this weekend. They're postponing all work until Tuesday. And they say the best time to travel is after 2 p.m. But here's the thing. Be prepared to pay big bucks when you fill up your tank. Gasoline prices are going to stubbornly stay above three dollars, and in the, probably the three ten and three twenty range throughout the rest of the summer. But we also know people don't let that get in the way of going on a vacation. No, they don't. And if you do hit the road, remember many of our national forests they are completely shut down this holiday weekend. It's a move to prevent more wildfires from sparking. Here in the Valley Phoenix, it'll be limiting access to trails in hopes of reducing fire danger. If you plan on hiking tomorrow, do it early. Entrance gates, they're going to close at 3 p.m. This includes several popular parks and mountain preserves like Camelback, Papago Park, and South Mountain. Developing this morning, the investigation continues into a bad crash on the 10 in Tonopah, leaving five people dead. DPS says yesterday a semi truck hit a sedan, splitting it in half. All five people inside that sedan were killed. And then the semi continued and crashed into another vehicle, that one with a mother and her four children inside. They were all taken to the hospital. The semi truck driver wasn't hurt, and DPS is now investigating how this all started. Uh, our roads, our roads, gotta be careful yeah. out there on our roadways. Uh, Heat, it is the number one weather related killer here in Arizona. And some new numbers show just how deadly it can be. And sometimes we really need this perspective. As of right now, 99 suspected heat related deaths are under investigation just in Maricopa County. An additional 16 deaths have been linked to heat. And of those cases, 10 of the victims were found inside a home. Five of them did not have working air conditioning. 
The victims range in age from 47 to 85 years old, and nearly all of the confirmed deaths involve people with underlying health conditions. And it is important to know the warning signs of heat illness so you know when it's time to seek some emergency help. According to the CDC, you may be suffering from heat stroke if you are experiencing a body temperature above 103 degrees or higher, a fast, strong pulse, hot, red, dry or damp skin, headaches, dizziness, confusion, and if you start passing out. Now, you could be suffering from heat exhaustion, a different category here, if you have heavy sweating, cold, pale, clammy skin, a fast, weak pulse, muscle cramps or nausea, headaches, dizziness or weakness. The CDC also says that you need to drink at least four cups of water an hour when temperatures are this excessive. And remember, it can happen even when we're in the 90s. It doesn't have to be 110. We do have an update for you on that condo building that partially collapsed last week. About 300 people who live in another condo mm -hmm. building just miles away now being forced to leave their homes. Yeah, you can anticipate this might have uh, been the case. This after it was deemed structurally and electrically unsafe and they then had to shut it down. Meanwhile, a tragic discovery amid the rubble of that building collapse and this one hits close to home. ABC's Christine Sloan has more. As search teams return to the rubble, the death toll climbing and a heart-wrenching discovery. Rescue workers finding the body of a seven-year-old girl, the daughter of a firefighter on the scene. It's very difficult when we're moving a fellow firefighter's daughter. And, and that's just where I want to emphasize uh, the emotion. The girl's father has been helping with search and rescue efforts since the building came down. We're told he placed a small American flag next to her body. His jacket draped over her as she was carried down, surrounded by first responders. The federal government now picking up 100 percent of the cost of the search and rescue operation and debris removal. Meantime, officials are moving forward with plans to demolish the rest of the building. A few miles away, officials also concerned about another building, the city of North Miami Beach, ordering the Crestview Towers condominium evacuated, saying an audit found unsafe structural and electrical conditions. Eyes also on the tropics, officials monitoring ELSA, which could bring wind and rain to the area and disrupt search and rescue efforts. We're not just running an emergency response, as you can see, but we're also preparing our whole community for a possible storm at the same time. And as we head into the holiday, the neighboring city of Miami Beach canceling fireworks in honor of the Surfside victims. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Representative Andy Biggs says that he believes that he is being investigated by the U.S. Justice Department in connection with the January 6th riots at the U.S. Capitol, but he denies any involvement. This comes as Congress prepares to begin its own inquiry into that riot. The Justice Department investigation, it has been ongoing since January. This week, Biggs told syndicated podcast host Todd Starnes that he may be one of the targets. I got some information that I had been referred to a DOJ investigation. I don't even know if it's true or not, but the the um, the source who told me that um, said you you you're, you know your phone's going to be tapped. Now, from the beginning, Congressman Biggs has been a supporter of the Stop the Steal movement. In June, Biggs repeated a conspiracy theory that the FBI may have helped instigate that deadly riot. Biggs told conservative commentator. Charlie Kirks and on his radio show that he thinks that the alleged FBI role should be investigated. The Department of Justice has not responded to our request for comment on Congressman Biggs claims. Switching gears now to talk about this Independence Day weekend and while fireworks can be something fun for families, they're not enjoyed by everybody. No, not at all. Some veterans of the 4th of July, uh, it can cause some agony and stress. The loud booms bringing them back to the battlefield. Adam Waltz, he's got more. It's a celebration for most, but it can be scary, stressful for our vets. Dr. Carl Forkner, who spent three decades in the Navy and currently helps other veterans file health claims, says fireworks can trigger all kinds of reactions for veterans with PTSD. Severe cases, they'll hit the deck like they're back in Vietnam or in the Gulf. Uh, others will uh, crawl under the covers. 
Dr. Forkner adds that sometimes the big planned fireworks show aren't as damaging because veterans with PTSD know they're happening. Oftentimes it's the random fireworks that go off in a neighborhood that could be more triggering. In Phoenix, Adam Waltz, ABC 15, Arizona. Now, if you know anyone who is in need of some support during the holiday, the crisis text line, it's going to be open 24 seven. That number is on your screen right now. Just text home to 741741 and this is a free text. Well, there are a lot of dangers concerning the use of fireworks and in many Valley cities, they have some regulations about when, where, and what type of fireworks you can light. Now, if you're curious about what your city allows, you can check out their official website. The regulations depend on a lot of factors, including current wildfire conditions and uh, other conditions in the area, especially the weather. Now, if you are still trying to decide how you want to celebrate the 4th of July, we've got a whole list of fireworks shows and other festivities around the valley. Many of these put on by the professionals. So just head to the things to do section of ABC15.com. And of course, you can find it on our ABC15 app. And a lot of celebrations being renewed this year after they were canceled last year because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Here's a celebration that we hope everybody can get on board with. The Phoenix Suns are going to be releasing some new gear ahead of the NBA Finals. These are the shirts that are going to be in the team shop starting today. So you can see they all have kind of a different look, a different color scheme there. They're already on sale on the Suns website too, but you can go in person to the shop. It opens at 10 a.m., but we should tell you last time they had new gear in that shop, our reporter Carla Navarrete was there live and mm -hmm. there was a line out the That's door right. to get in. So I don't imagine today will be any different. So just keep that in mind. Maybe send somebody down with your order. Yeah, I like that one with the basketball on it and the logo. Yeah, now it not that's my second choice. Nice and the, clean. The mm -hmm. first one is that one with the valley, the colors that kind of show like either sunset, sunrise. Yeah, those are really those cool. They've been coming cool. up with some great oh, stuff yeah, right yeah. now. And that um, the trailer has been out all week, you know, yeah. continuing and it. It's going to stay there outside on the plaza there for their other gear yeah. that's there also. That makes it good that the team has great colors to work with. Yeah. All right. And don't forget, ABC 15 is your home for the NBA finals. So you'll be able to watch game one right here. And then following the game, of course, we're going to have a special edition of ABC 15 with our sports team breaking down all the biggest moments, hopefully, of a dub. Still to come this morning, rethinking how officers interact with people on the street. We're going to take a look at if Tempe Police's new way of training is successfully reducing the need for physical force. We're diving deep. Coming up. Hurricane Elsa, it is gaining strength. This is some cell phone video here right now. This is from Barbados. You can see the wind just pushing those palm trees around as they just get slammed with rain. Right now, Elsa is a category one storm. This is the first hurricane of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Hurricane warnings, they have been issued for Barbados, St. Vincent, the Grenadines and St. Lucia, and it could hit Florida by early next week and no hey we were just talking i mean can you imagine if uh, they get hit with a hurricane in that surfside miami area as they're still working on those uh, search rescue recovery efforts there at that collapsed condo just yeah wow definitely the last thing they need mm -hmm. right now i mean it is what happens there but let's hope that it stays away from them or hits pretty mild and, and weakens mm -hmm. as it gets towards that area also some of the moisture from the east working its way into our state and affecting our weather patterns here as well. So across southeastern Arizona over the last six hours, we continued to see some lingering showers and that area of the state will continue to be at a higher risk uh, for storm activity today. They've got about a 70% chance of storms in the Sholo, Safford and Heber area in the eastern portion of the valley where we have a chance for some scattered storms today and that stretches up through northern Arizona and the Flagstaff area, western portion of the valley, more spotty chances likely future cast showing us that any storm chances will start to work its way into our state southern portion of the state around noon and then it becomes more widespread along the rim and to our south at about three o'clock we could end up in a bubble here in Phoenix but it does look like as we move through that five o'clock hour that we have increasing chances for some isolated storms across the northern and eastern portions of the valley temperatures right now in the upper 80s here in the valley also out west in quartzite 
and Yuma. We're in the 90s already in Bullhead City and Lake Havasu City. 70 degrees to start the day off in Prescott and we're in the upper 50s in Flagstaff and Heber this morning. Closer look at those temperatures right now across the valley in case you want to get out for an early morning bike ride. 85 in Gilbert right now. 89 in Tempe. It's a little warmer. 86 in Glendale as well as Surprise. It's 81 degrees in Wickenburg. And as we move through the next couple of hours, we are going to hit 90 degrees a little early today by about 8 o'clock, but we're going to linger in the 90s for a while. We'll hit triple digits at noon. It'll be 101 degrees and our breezes today will be pretty steady about 5 to 10 miles an hour. We will top out at 104 degrees across most valley cities today. That is below average for this time of year by a couple of degrees. It'll be 104 in Mesa, Levine, Glendale and Ahwatukee as well as Maricopa. 102 in Fountain Hills today and right at that century mark in Cave Creek and Anthem. Across the state, across the central portion of Arizona, we'll be in the upper 80s in Prescott today. Flagstaff will be in the low 80s as well as Sholo and then we'll be in the 90s across most of southern Arizona and triple digits out west. 110 degrees in Lake Havasu City and Bullhead City areas today. We also have an excessive heat warning in the lower areas of the Grand Canyon. That's in effect for the next week. Back here in the valley, we stay below average through this holiday weekend with storm chances lingering through Monday and then we start to warm up. The average for this time of year is 107. That's the forecast for Monday and then above average temperatures make their return on Tuesday. I'll show you how long that next trend is going to last in that full seven day outlook just a little later this morning, Mark. All right, no, hey, thank you so much. Now here in Arizona, it is especially important to stay hydrated during the summer and we often hear the term electrolytes when we talk about hydration, but what exactly do they do? Electrolytes, they are minerals in your body that have an electric charge to them. We get them from our food and from our drink. And according to the National Library of Medicine, electrolytes, they balance the water and pH levels in our body. They also move nutrients into our cells and waste out of our cells and help make sure that our nerves, muscles, heart, and brain, they're all working the way they should. But your electrolytes, they can be low or too high when the amount of water in your body changes. So if you become dehydrated, it can upset your water balance, and that is so important. Jigsaw Health, as a matter of fact, it's a local family-owned company that makes nutritional supplements, including electrolyte powder. Dehydration is a major thing people don't realize, uh, especially in the heat these days, you start to feel kind of dizzy, you get headachey, low energy, and usually people think, well, just drink more water. Uh, however, plain drinking water, even bottled mineral water, literally doesn't have the electrolytes or minerals in it that your body needs to be optimally hydrated. Jigsaw Health's Electrolyte Supreme. It is an electrolyte powder with other minerals and vitamins, but no sugar. You can learn more about that product and more just go to jigsawhealth.com. All right, it is 6.20 now on your Saturday morning. Still ahead as thousands of new college graduates prepare to enter the workforce. This morning, we revealed the five mistakes that they are making when it comes to saving and budgeting. Plus, it's 4th of July weekend, how cities are working to keep everyone safe once those fireworks begin. Millions of college students have turned the tassel. They'll be entering the workforce for the first time for some of them with their newfound careers. But a lot of times the financial aspect of that and how to start saving and preparing for your future takes a back seat. So to make sure that it doesn't and you don't end up in financial trouble right from the get, joining us this morning is local financial professional Stuart Willis from Asset Preservation Tax and Retirement Services. Hey, Stuart, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, Noe. So the statistic is 69% of new college grads are going to have student loan debt. That's the first thing. So why is it so important to, to be focusing with that in mind on, on well, your finances? Yeah, well, you know, for the first time in their lives, they may, may now be responsible for their budget um, where they have to pay their own bills. You know, oftentimes 
um, once uh, kids graduate uh, from college or kind of move out on their own, the parents are no longer covering quite as much as they did when they were in college. Um, at least that's the plan I have for my kids. So they better figure it out quickly, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're saying there are some mistakes that are very clear that college grads are making. The first one is defaulting on that loan to begin with. Well, yeah, and the first thing you have to do is put into perspective that the average American leaves college with $30,000 in debt from college. And now um, a lot of them have been seeing in the news that just, you know, the government's going to pay it back. You know, there's no need to make payments now. So we're starting to see a rise in defaults. The, the most important thing to understand is that you're going to have to buy a house one day, presumably, or buy a car. And if you start defaulting now on those loans, you're going to just destroy your credit. And, and it really is going to hinder your ability to, to, to start fresh, start early. Checking that credit score and making that a regular habit is, is important for sure. You also talked about budgeting and some are doing it for the first time on their own. Uh, it's really important to understand what kind of expenses you have going out and your income coming in, not just for college graduates. It's important for everybody in a relationship to, to share those duties uh, equally. You know, this one, a lot of us don't think about until we're well into our career. And then you realize you should have been thinking about it sooner. And that's retirement. That's another huge mistake is that, you know, people just say, hey, you know what, I've got time to save. And there's an interesting statistic that said, if you start at age 22 years old, and just put $3,600 away a year, assuming an 8% rate of return, you'll have a million dollars by age 62. Now, if you wait until age 32, that's 10 years later, um, you're going to have to put away $8,200 to get to that same number at 62. So the earlier you start, the better. Last one, a savings, which can be hard to do because you've just started. Sometimes you're not making that much. You're living paycheck to paycheck, but you're saying try to focus on that 80-20 rule. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's really important to make sure you put away 20% of your income into savings of some sort. And remember, you need to have money for a rainy day. If, if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's to say that stuff happens, right? Sometimes it's the parents who have to lay this groundwork, have that conversation. And so if they need that help navigating this or to, uh, you know, refer their kids to someone, how do they get in touch? Where do they go? Well, if they go to our website at www.apsitaxes.com, uh, we have tons of guides on there. Um, we're, a, we're a good resource to be able to help. Excellent information. And I think something that everybody could use a little guidance on. So Stuart, we appreciate your time and your tips. No problem. Thanks so much for having me. Still ahead in ABC 15 exclusive, the renewed effort to find baby Gabriel more than 12 years after he vanished this morning. We're hearing from the baby's dad. Plus, preparing your pets for the fireworks this weekend, the simple things that you can do to ease their anxiety. 